G'day and welcome back to Space Engineers Survival. Last time, we were waiting for the solar panels to lose all their power so that we could do a significant upgrade. And it looks like we're almost at that point. So we can start doing a few preparations. First one is we need to grind down this little stair here because we need to get room in order to do a little extension here. I think that should be far enough. And then on top of that, we're going to place some pistons. Though I can't really place them until these have stopped spinning. It looks like, yeah, we've lost power now. So I'm going to take over control of these from the programmable block by turning the programmable block off. Alright, turn you off. And this rotor, which is the vertical one, I'm going to rename. And I'm going to set its lower limit to zero. I'm going to set its velocity to 0 0.5, no, 0 0.2, because it's moving fast. Reverse it, and it'll spin back around to its neutral position. I want it in that position because we're going to need to attach a landing gear to it. And that will attach more easily if we're square on. While that rotor is spinning around, and we see it's coming back into position, Looks like the other rotors are still spinning, so let's fix that as well. This one's still spinning, so let's set its lower limit to zero. This one is currently very slowly spinning. So I'll set its lower limit to zero. Increase its speed of rotation to minus two. It'll get there eventually. That one's already reached. So that'll put them both in their horizontal positions once the vertical rotor locks back into its original position. What's going on? What did I do wrong? I did something wrong. Where's my vertical rotor? Oh no. Just got to get almost all the other way around. Minus zero point four. I can go a bit quicker. I'm getting impatient. I wanted to spin them slowly because I didn't want to overshoot the mark and have to chase back. This was a bit easier for me. We're almost there. Which means we can start adding these pistons in. We're going to need multiples of these. And the reason for that... Oh, hang on. I need to start this lower down. I want to get three pistons stacked and still be able to connect to the top part of the tower. So if I'm going to do that, I actually need to start fairly low down to fit them all in and still be able to connect. So what I might do is a little bit of weirdness. And go to there. Now we can stack a piston there. Stack a second piston on that. Stack a third piston on that one. Huh. Probably didn't need to go so low. Oh well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll be okay actually. Grind that off. And now, here comes the tricky part. Upper armor block on there. Oh no! Oh! Jeez! Oh, that that was very close to death. Oh, that was a bad place to run out of hydrogen. Very bad place. Let's fix that before we go and do anything else. Back to what we were doing. 
We've got our pistons. Now, don't like attaching right down there. So what we're going to do is attach from here. Since I did go too low. And I did not mean to. Then, from this rotor, we'll need to convert to small parts. Grab the parts we need to finish that rotor. So our new rotor's finished, and we need to add a small rotor head to it. That new rotor should say detached. There we go. It says detached. Let's go down here, add small head. We've now got a small rotor head on it, which means we should be able to fit in here a basically perfectly aligned landing gear. So, if we build that landing gear, it should show as locked. Yep, locked. Perfect. Now we just need to construct those pistons, and we'll be ready for the test. And I really hope that's going to stop spinning soon. So we've got our pistons finished, and I've built this little viewing chair. One thing I think I should do is maybe complete that. It's all seeming kind of sketchy, but hopefully it's going to work. And we'll go in. And I'm going to get these to share inertia tensors with each other. And with our rotor. Which one was it? Are all our rotors currently fixed. Let's put... I want to share it with... Oh, solar rotors. There we go. It's this one. So, let's... Share its... Inertia Tensor. And now... Hopefully, this should be stable enough that we're able to lift this whole thing off. We're going to grab our vertical rotor. And we're going to detach it. Everything seems pretty stable. So, let's do this slowly. Let's lift with one piston first. You can see that's working quite nicely. This is good. So we're going to have to lift each of these three pistons all the way up. My plan is to add eight extra blocks of height to the tower. So the third piston is only there to create enough room to replace the vertical rotor. The other two are actually giving the lift. And the third one is there just to allow us room. I originally planned on using the rotor to spin the whole contraption out of the way, but I don't think it's got enough force to counteract both of those sides of panels and all the weight that they have with them. And if we step out of our seat now... So this is the, height, the new height that it's going to be at. And you can see, I think it still looks reasonably balanced, but... Here's the important bit. We create a huge amount of extra space between the mountain and the solar panels. That's what I'm after. We'll extend the last piston. I don't want to push it up this tall because I think if we pushed it to that height, it would start looking a bit silly. And I don't want to use part of the height because we need four sides so that the stairs still line up properly. Well, it could work at that height, but I think we'll I think we'll be happy with the gains we're going to get out of just one just this eight block lift. And eight blocks is quite a substantial bit higher. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now we place our rotor. Rebuild it. Grind down the rotor part. Grab the extra steel plates that I should have already had on me. There we go. Now. 
Let's hop back in our viewing seat and do the final stage. We are going to grab one of these pistons, reverse it down, and once it gets back to its original position, that rotor part should be able to lock back onto that rotor, and we'll have lifted our tower without having to do any deconstruction of the solar panels. And I reckon this has been a much quicker way of doing this than trying to do it with any sort of of well without having to deconstruct the panels I reckon this is a much quicker way of doing things now I can deconstruct the lifter I am very happy with how that went I would call that an extremely <laughs> can't speak but I'm excited that was a uh, I still can't say it successful lift there we go there tongue tying myself that was quite effective now the interesting part which is just how many extra panels will this allow us to fit Get to these extra bits of scaffolding. Alright. What we're going to need to do is spin the tower in such a way that it brings us to it. Oh no. Oh no. Oh. I ran out of hydrogen and I'm stuck up a cliff. That's not good. Alright. Let's do what we were planning on doing up here anyway. So this is about 45 degrees off from neutral. So we want to spin the tower so that that arm comes around this way and then spin the panels so that they're vertically aligned. That's going to give us our shortest axis and allow us to get an idea of how much clearance we've got. And now I have to try and scale this cliff without dying. It's looking good so far. I think I can survive that fall. Yeah. Okay, that wasn't as scary as I thought. Still. I've gotten very lucky with where I've dropped so far tonight. Let's heal myself right up. Grab a bit more hydrogen in our tank that I accidentally put away. Oh, that explains so much. Oh, that does explain so much. You dope. Why did you put away your tank? Alright. Now, to control these rotors, we want to realign rotor 2, which we're going to rename to our vertical rotor. And I'll put it in brackets this time because it makes it so they stay in the same place in our list. And if its current angle is 270... Whoa. Alright. Let's have a look if that's true. Yes, it is. And these textures have been fixed, so we can actually check. So if that's at 270, and I want to move that arm around that way, I would like to move this around to 225. Let's do that. To move that rotor around to 225, we want to select it, set its minimum, its lower limit to 225, and set its velocity to minus 0.2. Ah. And it looks like it's going the correct way. And once it hits 225, it will stop. We can then... Have a look. And I... Don't remember which one of these. Let's guess that it's two. Let's... Set our current angle... Our lower limit to... Minus 90. Did I start the correct side moving? I can't tell. I think I did. Let's hop up and have a look. Oh yeah. I did. So we'll now have everything lined up in such a way that we're as close to the cliff as we can be. 
which will give us an idea of how much extra clearance we've got. First off, let's start by grinding that off. We'll add a few extra half blocks while we're waiting. We'll decide how big I'm willing to go so that it doesn't look too ridiculous. Maybe an extra, maybe we can double out. Look at that from a silhouette point of view. Yeah, I think that could be okay. We do that and then add another one here. Now we need to get our solar panels back on our list. Let's place a couple of these down. Oops, wrong way. There's three of them. I think the extra one would be a bit too close to the cliff. But we've managed to get a lot of extra clearance, which is nice. And what this also allows us to do is while we can add those extra six and double our output, we can also, later on, add some extras like this. It'll start working for me. I want to slightly off-align these. I think we can get away with that. So this will be an enormous solar array when we finish all of that. We'll gain an extra... So we've currently got 12. We'll gain an extra 12 plus... How many did I put across there? 1, 2, 3, 4... Extra 16. So we add... <laughs> Right. We had a lot. Let's just leave it there. Da, da, da. One, two, three, four. Oh, yeah. So we're basically adding an extra seven. We're adding an extra 28. That's big. That's awesome. We just have to now create the thousands of solar cells that we need for all of those. Once I've placed all these, we're going to need to reset our programmable block to take control of all of these. I just didn't want anything moving while I was setting it up. And we're going to have to reset those rotors as well. So that everything doesn't go weird when the programmable block takes control again. Okay. Now it is time to fix up these rotors. So we've got... Our first rotor, let's set its velocity to zero. Our vertical rotor, set its velocity to zero. And then we'll whack our lower limit down to unlimited. Same with this one. Lower limit to unlimited. Rotor 2, velocity to 0, and lower limit unlimited. Something to keep in mind that seems to happen even worse than it did before the latest patch. If you push this lower limit above our current angle, things tend to get explosive very quickly. So be careful of that. Now we want to name all of these part of the solar rotors group. So we can select the solar rotors group. Select that. Click save. Where's our programmable block? Turn you back on. And now it's saying statistics for 40 solar panels. Excellent. I'm going to spend a bit of time welding up all the basic components of those panels. It'll give us a better idea of exactly what's there. At least until I run out of materials. And hopefully we'll start producing a few more cells a bit more quickly. And then we're going to have to think about, since we can now expect more power output eventually, we need to get another assembler, we need to get better refineries set up, we need to do a whole bunch of that sort of thing to really pump up our efficiency. Oh. 
All right, all of the basics of these solar panels are finished. That took a long time. We're going to need to figure out a way to increase our production capacity without substantially increasing our power usage. And that could be difficult. Hmm. So, I think in order to do that, I've got a couple of options. I could start doing some odd expansions out the side of the base here in order to get another assembler built, maximize its efficiency modules. But what I should probably do first is move the oxygen generator and the med bay out of here so we can get access to those refinery upgrades ports. And I'm going to move them to a temporary location. I don't like doing that, but I think everything's going to take too long if I don't. So what we'll do, since they're not connected up to the normal conveyor system at the moment anyway, we can just pop them in this hallway for the time being. And I think I'll pop them over this side. I need to grab some interior plate so I can even place it. If I place it over here, it's a temporary thing. Like that. And then put... Put our oxygen generator on top, just as we have it inside. I can now move everything over to here. And I think that's going to be in our best interests. We'll start by removing our medical room. Then we can start, then as soon as we've got them out of the way, I'm going to substantially increase a number of power efficiency modules that are on our refinery. I think I'll put two more on there. And then after that, put a yield module on there as well. Let's try not to drop too many components on the floor. I think this is going to be our only real option here. Oh, no, there's only one piece left. All right, med bay moved. As soon as we've got that finished, we're going to need to move all of the ice out of the oxygen generator before we grind it down. Otherwise, we will likely experience explosive consequences. Going to need to move all that somewhere. It looks like there's enough room in the storage container at the moment. Go. Oh, I've only accessed two ports. Dang it! Alright, well, two more power efficiency modules will be useful anyway. You can probably even use the fact that that connector's there and start building pipes through the base in order to eventually move our refinery down into our refinery room. But that's going to take a long time to set up, so I thought. There's a stopgap. We can at least get closer to that point by using... by increasing our power efficiency since I think we're running pretty low. Let's have a look. What are our batteries at? Depleted in one hour. Fantastic. They've got 740 kilowatts left in them. Oh dear. Well, that's not good. Definitely need to get that power upgrade module, those power upgrade modules on the refinery to increase our efficiency considerably. Let's plan to place down two of these. One and two. Because if we have a look at our assembler, our assembler is currently using 167 kilowatts, whereas our refinery. And these two use the same. So we can actually reduce our power usage by an extra 200 kilowatts by putting those power efficiency modules on there. So we'll jump ahead to when I've finished those as well. And done. Let's see how much power we've got left in those batteries now that we've done that 
full upgrade on the refinery. Looks like we've... Well, if we assume that it was exactly one hour. We've substantially increased it anyway. We could have doubled our battery time. That tempts me to place down another arc furnace. I know they're using twice as much energy as... Well, I think they're using twice as much energy as the refinery is now. Go to our control panel. Go to arc furnace. 330 versus 167. So yeah, about double. But they do produce a little bit more and they're a lot cheaper to make. And making all of the resources for another refinery and finding a spot to put it is going to be difficult. So let's get another arc furnace. Because... If we do, we hopefully will then have enough refined nickel to actually get our assembler producing at its maximum rate. Right now we're limited by not our assembler's rate of production, but actually by our production of nickel. Because if we can increase the rate of our production of solar cells, we'll then hopefully catch up and get ahead of our power requirements once day breaks and actually start charging those batteries during the day rather than still depleting them, just depleting them more slowly. All right, and arc furnace complete. Let's have a look at our arc furnaces. Let's get them all producing nickel. Got enough nickel, we can add some more to each of the queues. I've one permanently producing nickel. This should give us a little bit of a bank up. And if we have enough iron around, do we have enough iron around? We. Oh, yeah, we've got 53,000. That'll last us a little while. Now we can get through, hopefully, most of this production queue, so we've got a bit of extra components lying around. And then, come daybreak, we should get our solar cells much more quickly, and hopefully substantially increase our power output in the next day. Which would be amazing. There'll be a few underground projects I can do in the meantime. Let's check how many more cells I need for that last panel on this, this side, this side. Oh, yeah. Got an extra panel for morning. Let's start with, hmm. Try and make it so I can actually remember which one I've started with. And we'll start with this one. Hopefully I do remember it's that one. Let's start thinking about what we can do with the time while we're waiting for those solar cells to be made. Since our battery-powered flying ship is kind of out of action, we have enough resources so we don't really need to mine right now. I'd like to try and plan out how we're going to connect our new refineries when we can start building them to our old setup so that we don't have to move everything by hand. If we grab a few steel plates, so I don't really think we need an interior plate. We can then use our conveyors. Where are our conveyors? There they are. We can start planning these connections. We'll drill, we'll grind through here. And there. On there. Then we'll have an idea of how much in the way of resources we're going to need to actually get this thing finished. And this one's very much temporary. This is just in order to get things moved and connected up to the new area without me having to actually move anything by hand. I'm going to want to connect it through... Let's have a look. Where's the refinery? Make this vaguely efficient. That lines up with the wall. Bugger. Okay. Alright. Not so vaguely efficient. We will drill through here. And we will come through this one. Which means we turn now. And there. And then we can build this tube the whole way through. 
Then I'm gonna have to count out how many parts are how many pieces I need to get an idea of just how crazy a number of motors and everything else I'm gonna need to make. And we should probably put one of these there because we're going to need to, when we build our next refinery, we'll extend off this side. Cool. That's our refinery. Once we build all those connections, which will be what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. So 27 of them. Each one needs six motors. That a lot of motors. That is a lot of motors. We should now see that this will be able to con continuously produce solar cells. So I'd like to leave that one doing that. And plan for... Why don't we do a temporary assembler here? So I haven't figured out where I'm going to put my assembler room yet. And we do want another assembler. So, yeah. And there'll be enough... And there'll be enough space around this one to put power efficiency modules all the way around it and still be able to sneak past on the left here. Although, that's a bit silly. Why don't I do it like this? Then I've got closer to the other side. There we go. So we'll plan for that to go in there. And our refinery rooms over here, maybe... Maybe our assembler room could go down below. Could build it under the corridor. That could definitely work. Ooh, I like this idea. If we build it out that way underneath, we can plan our assembler room in there. So we probably want, maybe, ultimately, four assemblers will be alright. Because once we get enough power, we can stop having them with power efficiency modules and start having them with speed efficiency modules. Since that's going to be important to us as well. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So we'll build it directly. We want those two uh, support beam ones. So the door can go in there. I actually realized that I was totally wrong in saying that I couldn't get something that could drill in here. I would have to destroy doors and things, but it's definitely doable. Unfortunately, I don't have enough power on the Ugly Duckling anyway in order to use it, so even if I did do that, I'd still be stuck drilling by hand. For our assembler room, I'd like to have the assemblers on both sides of the room. Because I think that'll look a bit more interesting. And that means we're going to need a fairly wide room, but not a very long room. And we shouldn't need a very tall room either, which is why I think it'll work reasonably well being stuck underneath the other corridor. Let's head down here. So, in order to fit assemblers down both sides of the room, I'm going to need enough space for... Each assembler has upgrade modules on all sides. It ends up being sort of a 3x3x2 volume. And if that's what we're going to use here, we've only got two blocks in height. I think one of the upgrade modules will end up being set in the floor, which I'm okay with. Because what I think we'll do is if we put catwalk say, oh, actually, if I grind these ones away, and we put, and we drill this all out completely, haha, I think I have my design in my head now, yeah, right, 
So, for this little assembler room, what we want is assemblers down both sides. And to create that, I have an idea of how we can do it. So it'll look a bit interesting. And because we're stuck with only two blocks in height, allow us to see all of the parts, even though we won't technically be able to access some of them. Let's get rid of these bits out of the roof, and then I'll start placing this down. So what I'll do temporarily is put down... Leave at least one block space. Then... So maybe we'll leave... Yeah, one block should be enough. Then we place our assembler. And we'll have a second assembler like that. So we'll have two on each side like that. The upgrade modules... will go... We'll leave that one off for the moment. The upgrade modules will go on all sides. And... Our floor... will actually be down here. I drill out a little bit more. Be able to get the idea better. Pop blocks in like so. Must be something in the way. Yes, there is. I can see them there. Go away, little blocks. Disappear. Come on. Magically disappear. There you go. What we'll have is this floor down here. With the upgrade module sticking down toward it. And then this gap in between our walkway here and the assemblers and the gap down there will actually get some catwalk. So I'll put catwalk along on both sides. I think that'll end up looking pretty neat. So I'll drill this space out and we'll come back when it's done. Actually, before we do that, let's just check what time of the day it is. It might be time for the solar cells. Light up. It looks pretty dark. Oh yeah, it's still very dark. Have we got enough solar cells finished? Ooh, we're getting close. And I think we're going to build up excesses of nickel, which will be nice. Let's get back to the hole. So I'm going to jump ahead to when the when I've drilled out more of this space. This is sort of the idea I had in mind, except I realized I should not have placed these four there. Because I can't actually place catwalks there. What I'll need to do is put catwalk down the center. Means I probably don't need to have these armor blocks here. Hmm. Let's revise a little bit, like so. And dig out a little bit more of the floor. Place these down along here, so we'll have a floor all the way down the middle. And, and go back to our catwalk blocks. We need open the ends. There'll be stairs going off both sides. And we'll have... I think I went too far. The straight pieces down the center like this. So that when you walk into the room, you'll be able to walk in, walk down, and get around underneath all of the assemblers with their power upgrade modules on. And... Down the center, you'll be able to see all of them as well. I think it'll create a reasonably cool looking space. Now that that's set up, we can actually place these on. Get an even stronger idea of what this is going to look like. Underneath. This will kind of be like a maintenance access area. Where the stairs allow you access down. Although I should probably only put stairs on one side, maybe, since I can't actually get into the middle there. Hmm. Might be an idea. Maybe I'll just have stairs at one end. Let's get rid of that. And pop. 
straight piece in here, which will have to come from this side. Like that. And eventually there'll be a door at the other end that goes onto other areas, like storage areas. That's kind of the idea of what I wanted to do in here. Which will eventually be our final ro assembly room. Just place down one side for the time being so that I have an idea of how we'll do the rest of it. And I don't really need to do that now anyway since I don't have the resources to build it. But it's nice to have these things laid out ahead of time so I can hopefully, with some degree of efficiency, move things toward there. And I think oh, the sky is getting light, so let's place down the remaining solar cells that have been manufactured overnight. Where have they been shifted to? Oh, we got 179. Nice! Might even get a whole three extra panels out of this. Is that the one that we started? Yes, it is. This is going much quicker with those with that extra arc furnace. Another panel. That'll be a second panel that we're definitely going to get done. Oh yeah, definitely getting three panels done. Awesome. Oh, no we're not. <laughs> getting close, but we're not quite getting there. Now, is something holding up production, or is production just slow now? Okay, it's not waiting in between still, so that's good. We have increased our production rate. And we have got a third panel. Yeah! And that thing is looking enormous. That's going to be a lot of solar power when it's ready. Let's check out our battery situation. Battery is fully recharged in 13 hours. Not too bad. And what about our programmable block? What is it telling us we're getting out of these things? Current output. Maximum output is currently 1.78 megawatts and we're producing 1.77. That's pretty good. Our batteries can actually get enough power today that they are increasing their charge. I can definitely expand our production facilities. Which would be very, very nice. We've got a lot more solar panels than we had a couple of days ago. Currently got 15 up there, which is... A strong start. I don't think I'm going to be expanding this tower any more than what I've laid out there, as I think it's already on the verge of ridiculous in terms of size. If we look at it from here. Yeah, it's pretty huge. If we're going to build another one, then I will have to go to the effort, I think, of expanding up to the top of the mountain or building a twin tower to this one on the other side. Building its pair. Hmm. Maybe the top of the mountain would be better. Then won't get stopped by the mountain inside light, even though it'll be a very exposed tower to any attacks that may happen in the future. Well, that was a fairly productive night. We managed to get through drilling out an assembly room, we laid out the conveyor tubes that we need, and we got this solar tower upgraded. And boy, is it upgraded! Going to need to build those catwalks to get all the way up there as well. But we've gotten to the point where we're constantly producing solar cells. So hopefully through today, we'll actually manage to get enough to put at least another three and maybe four or five solar panels up there. To be amazing. Really increase our power output to the point where an extra assembler is actually able to be powered. So there's that and plenty more to come. So I'll see you then. <laughs>